Among one of the driest regions on the planet, Saudi Arabia has done something almost insane. They bury more than 1.6 trillion gallons of water beneath the desert every year. Not oil, not natural gas, but salt water, pumped from the sea, then pushed deep beneath the scorching layers of desert sand. The question that has puzzled the world is, why would a nation so short on water that it must import food choose to bury water underground? The answer leads to a much bigger story. The story of an artificial river longer than the Nile, of ancient water reservoirs hidden beneath Arabia, and of how Saudi Arabia is changing its own destiny in a fight for survival against the desert. Saudi Arabia is located in a region where the average annual rainfall is only about 100 millimeters, meaning nearly 40 times less than in many European countries. The nation has no rivers, no lakes, and no stable surface freshwater sources of any kind. But the paradox is this. Saudi Arabia sits atop a massive underground water reserve. Geological surveys estimate that 26 trillion gallons of water are trapped within deep rock layers beneath the ground. This is a legacy from a time when the Arabian Peninsula was once lush and green, with heavy rainfall and flowing rivers, thousands of years ago. The problem is that most of this water is non-renewable. It is known as fossil water. Once pumped out, it is gone forever. Saudi Arabia has never forgotten this painful lesson. During the 1990s and 2000s, the country extracted groundwater to turn the desert into vast wheat fields. But after only a few years, the fossil aquifers were drained dry, leaving behind massive wells with nothing at the bottom. Groundwater was once an ancient blessing. Now it has become a fragile lifeline. Saudi Arabia does not use water only for drinking. Water flows into irrigation systems, industry, oil refineries, rapidly expanding urban centers like Riyadh, and into the modern conveniences demanded by a society that has grown wealthy at extraordinary speed. The country's total water demand far exceeds what can be naturally replenished by rainfall. In other words, Saudi Arabia is drawing water from a thousand-year-old savings account, while living as if it has unlimited income. The situation has become even more severe due to erratic rainfall. In recent years, rain has arrived in short, intense bursts, causing normally dry rivers to suddenly flood and then quickly disappear. Some years see no rainfall at all. By 2023, the country had built 559 dams, collecting every possible drop from dry wadi channels, but these supplies cover only a small fraction of total demand. In 2025 alone, Saudi Arabia reused more than 1.7 billion gallons of wastewater per day, an enormous figure. Yet it is still not enough. Despite expanding water recycling and building hundreds of dams, Saudi Arabia continues to pay a very high price to keep up with rising water demand. Thanks to modern RO technology, the cost of desalination has dropped significantly. However, because of the vast scale of operations and the continued use of many older facilities, the national average cost still stands at about 0.89 to 1.2 per cubic meter, roughly 10 times more expensive than water sourced from natural rivers or lakes. What truly alarms strategic planners is this. If just one major desalination plant were to shut down for 24 hours, millions of inland residents would be left nearly without clean water. In Riyadh, the price of household water once increased fivefold overnight in 2016, after the government was forced to cut subsidies to save the system. And that was the moment they made one of the boldest decisions in the history of modern engineering. When nature did not give them a river, they created one themselves. They could not dig canals, they could not build open reservoirs, and any exposed water would evaporate within minutes. So they chose the only option left, bury an entire river. They have built an underground pipeline system with a total length of approximately 12,000 kilometers, longer than the Nile, the longest natural river in the world. 
an invisible river, carrying desalinated water from the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf deep into the desert, flowing through hundreds of cities, cutting across the Hejaz Mountains, running beneath the scorching soil of Riyadh, then branching out like a massive circulatory system. And yes, salt water is pumped underground, not for storage, but to protect it from evaporation, maintain stable pressure, reduce contamination, and preserve transport efficiency. Placing the water beneath the sand also reduces pipeline fouling, limits corrosion caused by extreme day-night temperature swings, and keeps pressure stable over thousands of kilometers, all factors that would make an above-ground system highly vulnerable to failure or leakage. The idea sounds insane, but it was the only solution capable of saving an entire nation. To build this massive underground river, Saudi Arabia's engineers had to face a series of challenges that bordered on the unimaginable. First came the Hejaz Mountains, where pipeline roads had to cut through dense layers of granite and limestone. Massive tunnel boring machines were used, combined with carefully controlled explosions, to open the way and every single meter of pipe laid had to meet absolute precision standards to maintain stable pressure and prevent leaks. Once the mountains were crossed, they were confronted by the brutal desert environment, where outdoor temperatures frequently exceed 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Construction crews could work only at night or in the early hours before dawn to avoid heat shock, while constantly shifting sands, Sudden dust storms and rare flash floods kept the project under continuous threat. Some pipeline sections are so large that a small truck could pass through them if they were empty, and the entire system is buried deep underground to reduce evaporation to nearly zero, protect it from extreme temperature fluctuations, and maintain a stable flow across thousands of kilometers. The true heart of this underground river, however, lies in the desalination plants. Saudi Arabia is currently the world's leading nation in seawater desalination, and the Ras Al Khair plant, one of the largest desalination facilities on Earth, can produce approximately 1,036,000 cubic meters of water per day, equivalent to 273 million gallons, enough to supply millions of residents in the arid interior. But behind those impressive numbers lies a reality few people see. Operating a system like this is extremely expensive, with costs estimated at two to three billion dollars per year. The steel pipelines must be continuously protected against corrosion under one of the harshest climates on Earth, while pumping stations consume enormous amounts of electricity to maintain pressure across distances spanning thousands of kilometers. The most striking part is that citizens pay only a very low price, sometimes just one-fifth to one-tenth of the real cost, because the remainder is subsidized by the state using oil revenues. So if one day oil runs dry, will this nation still be able to sustain the invisible river that keeps tens of millions of people alive? This scenario may realistically unfold within the next few decades, as many energy experts have warned that relying on oil to produce water represents a genuine strategic risk. Saudi Arabia is only the first example of a world that is growing drier, but the way it has responded is entirely different. Libya once built the great man-made river, stretching thousands of kilometers of pipelines to bring fossil water up to supply cities along the Mediterranean coast. The scale was immense, but the water source was non-renewable, and that very fact caused a project once hailed as the eighth wonder of humanity to ultimately fade into the sands. Israel chose a more refined path, desalinating and recycling water at a national scale, then transporting it from the Mediterranean into the Negev Desert. However, Israel is nearly 10 times smaller than Saudi Arabia. It optimizes technology but does not face distances spanning thousands of kilometers like Saudi Arabia does. California, meanwhile, built aqueducts across deserts and over the Sierra Nevada to deliver water to Los Angeles, but it relies on natural rivers and lakes, an advantage Saudi Arabia simply does not have. 
Three different models, yet when placed side by side, Saudi Arabia's uniqueness becomes unmistakable. It is the only nation to combine Libya's scale, Israel's technology, and California's terrain-crossing water strategy, then push the entire system underground to create an unprecedented invisible river. Thanks to the underground river and the massive desalination system, Saudi Arabia has completely transformed the way it survives in this arid land. Water has begun to flow into places where life was once nearly impossible. Riyadh, a city deep in the desert, hundreds of kilometers from the sea, now has a supply stable enough for industrial zones to rise along major pipelines, while residential areas are greening faster than ever before. The increase in desalinated water has also reduced pressure on fossil aquifers, slowing the depletion of this already fragile ancient resource and becoming a critical step in helping Saudi Arabia avoid a nationwide water scarcity scenario in the future. This new flow has also become a central pillar of the Saudi Green Initiative, a program aimed at planting 10 billion trees, protecting 30% of the country's land area, and restoring more than 184 million acres threatened by desertification. But perhaps most importantly, this invisible river has laid the foundation for a strategic transformation. It does not merely supply water, it shapes the entire urban future of the nation. Massive projects such as the expansion of Riyadh to 15 million residents, the 170-kilometer linear megacity Neom, or high-tech agricultural clusters deep within the desert, all are symbols of an unprecedented level of ambition in the Middle East. Yet regardless of whether people support or oppose Neom, one undeniable truth remains. Without water, every ambition of Saudi Arabia would be nothing more than massive concrete scars across the desert. Just like the costly lessons of abandoned megaprojects before them, from Ordos Kangbashi in China to the World Islands Project in Dubai, which all met similar outcomes. On the other hand, for every liter of fresh water produced, 1.5 liters of highly concentrated brine are discharged back into the sea, and this has sparked intense debate among ecologists. The brine released from desalination plants can reduce oxygen levels in coastal waters and harm marine life placing even greater pressure on the already fragile marine ecosystems of the Gulf. There is a striking truth. Not every oil-rich nation can survive climate change. But Saudi Arabia chose not to surrender to fate. They built dams to capture every drop of rain. They treat billions of gallons of wastewater every day. They desalinate seawater, drill through mountains, pump water underground, and create the longest artificial river humanity has ever built. All of this to answer a question that seems simple, yet is existential. How can a nation without rivers still have a future? Saudi Arabia did not merely find an answer. It rewrote its own survival map with a river you will never see, yet one that is flowing right beneath your feet. And its lesson is unmistakable. When the climate turns against you, adaptation is not optional. It becomes the only path forward. A desert nation with no rivers engineered one beneath its feet. A country defined by scarcity learned to manufacture abundance. In doing so, Saudi Arabia revealed a deeper truth. Survival in the 21st century will belong not to those with the most resources, but to those who can reinvent the systems that sustain life. Both are spherical in form, but while a glass ornament shines in stillness, a snow globe is the result of compressing an entire winter into a space defined by motion. And if today they can create a river from burning sand, can humanity tomorrow create a future from a warming planet before the heat forces our hand?